again and we're on the island and we are overlooking the Northwest River at the moment. I wanted to show you these plants right here. You probably have all seen these in your life. But I find them fascinating and I've been studying them now for a few years. Now, here's a horsetail. These are all horsetails right now. For the life of me, I have no idea why they're called horsetails. Uh, to me, they've always looked more like foxtails, but I'm not a botanist and I don't get to name them. These plants, it's interesting that to find them here, um, as you can see, we're on the beach. And normally you find them in a woods, in a marsh, in a kind of a shaded area, moist, um, a lot of times near active water, a little stream or something. They're like that. Uh, their heritage comes from a swamp. So they're like that. Um, these are vascular plants. If you remember last time I spoke about the club mosses, and they were the earliest vascular plants. Now these guys come up a little bit later, and uh, as you can see there's more structure to them. Um, they're bigger, obviously, and uh, they don't get much bigger than what they are. This, is, this one right here is about it. Um, they're a, what they're called a herbaceous perennial. Um, there's no, they're her, like herb-like because there's no wood in them. Um, these are not woody plants at all, yet they'll come up year after year. And uh, that, that's what they are. Now, the interesting thing is, there's a couple parts to this, and I'm going to kind of move around. As you can see down here, there's a stem, and the stem comes all the way up right to the end, and ends just around there. That's the stem. Now, in the stem, there are three parts. You have what's called a sheath right here, right there, right there. And at that sheath, these whorls, they're not really leaves, they're almost needle-like. Uh, but very soft. That's where they come out. Then you have what's called the internode, and then the node, and then the sheath, and then the internode, and it just keeps replicating itself all the way up, using that pattern. And just, it's almost like those Russian dolls that go into one another, these things come out of one another. So keep that in mind as a way of looking at it. Now, the interesting thing is, if this was a tree, you would say, well, all these needles here, like a conifer, are photosynthetic, and that's why they're green. Well, actually, in this plant, they're not. They're not photosynthetic. What's photosynthetic is actually the stem, and the stem is not green. The stem is uh, basically an off-brown, uh, but it is what's photosynthetic, so it makes it very unique in that sense. Um, the worlds which you can't really see here because probably the wind is stuff, but normally these would be more flat out. Um, and if you ever pass um, a woods or a swamp where there are dead conifer trees, especially without the bark, no leaves, no nothing, they're kind of like these things here, um, you will notice that the branches just come straight out and they tend to go in a whirl. And it's very reflective of these more primitive plants. These were here long before conifer trees were here. Now, um, this also, in a sense, what you see here is called the vegetative state. That is, it has done its reproducing very early on. Now, most of the trees and stuff in back of us, the grasses and things like that, they grow first, and then they bring out their seeds and fruits and what have you to reproduce. These guys come up not this one here, but something just like this, but without all of these. It's just a little stem, almost like this, and there's a little cone at the top. That's the reproductive part of this plant. Then it dies, and when it dies, this comes up, the vegetative part of it. Now, the thing is, in the ground, it has not quite a root system as we would think of a tree or anything like that. What it has are rhizomes, and the rhizomes are actually just extensions of this stem. So it goes in the ground, um, and again, over here maybe the, the reproductive state will come up and then die off, and then once that happens, this comes up. Now the interesting thing is that 
any part of the rhizome that's in the ground, if it was cut or just had the notion, it could send up a plant like this. So even though it does have that cone at the top for reproduction, this can reproduce itself as a clone at any time. The interesting thing about the rhizomes is that they can go, and I'm looking here on the beach, because I know that it's not far down here, there's marine clay, and that marine clay is going to stop most everything, I think, going through it. The rhizomes can go, go down two to three meters. I mean, there are trees on the island that don't have those kind of roots, and they can go out, and there's a good chance that a lot of these that you see all the way over here. Could be the same plant. Just rhizomes making the plants. They could go out over a hundred meters. So, you know, I don't know if this is the mama plant or what, but it is the biggest. Um, so all of these could just be clones of this plant here. Now, as I go back to that reproductive state, um, I'm going to do something that I don't no, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to pull that one out down here, a little tiny one. But I'm not. I'll use this one here. Right here at the end, on the other, not on this one, but on the reproductive state, I said there's a little cone. And it looks like maybe an ear of corn or something like that. <coughs> it's called, called a stroboli. And the eye, the, a strobilis, sorry. And inside that, if you cut it in half, around the outside of the whole thing, there are these little pockets called sporangia. And in those pockets, they're all green by the way, in those pockets are the spores. That's where they come from. And that whole thing, if you find these guys, uh, May, depending on the weather in the winter, in May or early June, uh, you'll see them. They're all brown with this little corner. And if you hit them, that you'll see all of the dust come out. And those are the spores, and you've just participated in horsetail sex. Um, you're the father or mother. Um, so it's kind of an interesting plant in that sense. Now, to continue, <clears throat> I remember as a kid, we used to pick up blades of grass, put them in our lips, and go make a whistle out of it. And if you weren't careful, you got this very sharp feeling on your lips or sometimes on your tongue. Well, grasses do the same thing these guys do. They extract silicon from the soil. And these things, in a sense, have glass in them, just like grass does. And uh, I, 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 you think of a cow or a bison or something like that, munch it. That's why these teeth wear down. They don't have sharp teeth. They have these big, flat teeth that just grind and grind. And they wear down because they're grinding down glass. And that's why they have, maybe have four stomachs, too, just to digest it. So you have that. There's only, and I say this, there are only 15 species worldwide of Esquizitum. That's the family that these guys belong. Only 15 species. And most of them are found in the North Hemisphere between 40 and 60 degrees. So basically by the time you get to Saskatchewan and Manitoba, you're not going to find a heck of a lot of these guys. And 40 will bring you, you know, into the upper Midwest and New England and stuff like that. So that, that that's its range. Um, there's eight species of this in New Brunswick, so we got you know, half of them, that's not bad. Now the other thing is, and I mentioned a conifer, I did an experiment. I photographed the strobilus of this, and again, I cut it in half, and you see the strobe, all the spores and the sporangia on the outside. On here, I took a spruce cone off the island, cut it in half, and if you looked at it, you get the, first of all, the strobilis and the cone almost look identical, especially when you cut them in half. And all around the outside, you see those naked seeds, is what a gymnast sperm is, a naked seed. And they're in the exact same places where the sporangia would be. Then, my wife has uh, cone flowers. I said, cone, terrific. Cut one in half, 
photographed it and in the cone flower which is an angiosperm which means it has seeds that are protected with a shell or whatever and amazingly those seeds are in the same place as the conifer cone or the strobilis up here so nature found a structure and it stayed with it I, I, that blows my mind now the other thing is I want to show you this. These are the descendants of Calamites. And Calamites were here 300 million years ago. Uh, probably this island, instead of white pines, probably had Calamites and uh, the club mosses. That would have been the Sigillaria trees and then maybe chordates and all over the place. And you find the fossils. I found this and I'm going to show it to you. That is a fossilized Calamite. Now it has the same structure as it. Here, here are the, the internodes and, 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 and everything else. The same, and it has even the grooves going this way. The plants still have them. And the amazing thing about this, of course, it's three dimensional. Normally you find a fossil as an impression. Well, I found this one, and I also found a rock the same day that had an impression in it of something like this. And months later, I was kind of looking at both of them, and I found out that this actually fit into the impression that was in the rock. Now, there is a debate going on today amongst people who actually study these professionally, and this is a clue to it. There are those who argue that these plants down here are the descendants of calamites. Not a problem, I believe that most of my life. There are those who look at something like this and say, that's not a little calamite, that's a horsetail from 300 million years ago. Now, that debate has not been settled, but if the second group is right, and this is not a little calamite, but a 300 million year old horsetail, then you're looking there at a living fossil. Not like the club mosses, which got smaller. If the second theory is right, what I'm looking at right there is a living fossil that has been around for 300 million years. Worth coming to see, eh?